I'll tell you what. Uh, as many have said, that trip was life-changing. Uh, I always hear people say, you know, you leave a little piece of your heart here or this or that, but these people touched my life. They touched my heart. As many have said before, you go out there thinking you're going to be a blessing. You think, man, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And turns around, you're the one that's getting the blessing. It was an Arizona mission trip, as many of you know. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to have you turn there to uh, Exodus chapter 17. And I'll be start reading at verse 8 when I get there. But it was the mission trip 2021 to Hono, Otham, and I still butcher the name, I know, day camp. It was to be a good soldier. You know, and I'm thinking about wh why did we go? We were not there just to see the great sights that you saw up there on the screen. Although there were many, there were times when I looked out and I just cried, Brother Sean. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. I've never been, I, I'm a West Virginia. We go to Myrtle Beach, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Florida, and that's as far as we travel. We're about five state boomers, and that's as far as we go. But I got out west, and I thought, oh my goodness. The God that loves me, the God that sent his son to die on the cross for me, created all of this beauty, but yet he still loves me. He still thinks about me. He still cares about me. And my, it would just overwhelm my soul when I would, and I would just take, try to take everything in. But that's not why we went. We were not there to make new friends necessarily, but although many of us did, we made new friendships with people that we had never met before. But when you gather together with people of like mind and like spirit and like ideals and thoughts and they love the same thing, they love Jesus and they love the Word of God and they love church, you can't help but be drawn to one another. You can't help but to make new friends. And although we didn't go to make friends, we made many. Many that have touched our hearts. And we were not there just to play games and have a good time, although we did that too. We played a lot of games. These kids out there can go swing, play on the playground in 112 degree heat. I, I was not about that, but some of the guys, they, hey, they were all, I'm telling you, some of them were troopers out there in the sand and the dust blowing, and it was like 115, and they're swinging and playing ball and shooting arrows. And I said, whoa, whew, I'm glad I got chose to be a teacher. And we weren't there. <laughs> I got to have a class, and fortunately, uh, or bl a blessing, another blessing, I, our class, Amanda and mine and the Kerrigan and Garrett and several of those were in there with us. Uh, there, were, there were several others in there. I don't see them here tonight. But um, we had the best working air conditioner. I mean, and when, you're, when it's 115, if you can make it 78, you're thrilled. You are thrilled. So our class had air conditioning. But we weren't there just to play games. I got to thinking, why did we go? We went to reach a lost and dying world that is going to hell if they do not hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and accept him Amen. as their Savior. That's the reason we went. And the other reason we went was, and many said it before, and I've already said some of it, we went to try to be a blessing to our fellow brothers and sisters. Only to find out. We wanted to lift them up. We wanted to encourage them. Those that were on the missing field, Pastor Jay and Miss Becky, a lovely couple that sat and told us the story and of the struggles and of how they had to start. And the, they, they walked us through the, you know, the, the time periods of their missionary the journey there and their mi ministry there. And Brian and Luann and how they met, how they become involved in, in this. And Bob and Paula, how they started a Spanish church there. And if you would, see, and you've seen some of these pictures, they're not there now, but I was going to turn around and look. But if you see some of that area, it's desolate. And you think, where do they even find anybody to go to church? But through all that, in that area there, they have a thriving ministry that would just, it, it blew my mind when I seen what was going on. That's why we went. 
We went to reach the lost and to edify and lift up and encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ that are out there on the battlefield that are doing this every day and they are fighting and they're pushing and they're trying to get the gospel out there and they're trying to reach as many as they can. We went to be soldiers for Christ. On this trip, I saw many great soldiers in action. And you know what? Each and every one of you all here are a soldier that was involved in this action. Every soldier, like somebody said earlier, you're putting boots on the ground or whatever, but you're not always right on the front line. There are many jobs and many soldiers have many different positions to fill. Many pray, plan, and prepare. And thank you all for sending us. Because I can tell you, I'm a life that was changed. Some of the soldiers drove over 30 hours one way and, and, and in the, the heat. And we had a few little issues with some things, but they kept on pushing on. Some of the soldiers cooked, cooked outside in some of this heat. Those that played games, I've already told you, you are my heroes in the 112 degree heat. But we had soldiers that did skits. We had soldiers that sang. We had soldiers that taught. We had soldiers that got to preach. We had some that just got the love on these children. Just to show them a little love for the week and to let them know that there's somebody out there bigger than us that cares for them and loves them. So what makes a great soldier? What makes a great soldier? I can tell you it's nothing in us. We can think we're strong. We can think we're mighty. We can think we can do a lot of things, but we are nothing without God leading us and without His Word and everything. We have to go with it. And if you have your Bibles open to uh, Exodus 17, chapter 8, uh, chapter 17, verse 8, I'll be beginning reading. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose, out, choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand, so Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that <clears throat> when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat there on and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword God we thank you for your word we thank you for this day we thank you for this opportunity God we thank you for everything that you've already done God but we praise you and thank you for what you're going to do God we just praise you and thank you for saving us and I pray you'll touch my mind and these lips God they'll say what you want them to nothing more nothing less and we just pray if there's anyone here who does not know Christ as their Savior God that tonight they'll accept him before it's eternally too late we just praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be real brief here with you tonight, but we're going to look at some things to be a great soldier. As many of you know, we're coming up here, and the Israelites have come out of bondage in Egypt. And they're coming out of bondage, and they've seen God do many great things already. They've seen the plagues. They've crossed the Red Sea. They've come out, and here they are, and now they're, they're, they're upset. They're, 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 the Bible says chide at Moses. They're upset. They're angry. And because they have no water where they've stopped. They said, where is the water, basically? Uh, and I'm paraphrasing there, Moses. And they're angry. And you know, that's what Satan wants us to happen in our lives. Satan wants us to be upset. Satan wants us to be angry. As a group of people, he wants us to be, be in disagreement with each other. He wants us to be fighting with each other. He wants us to be at each other's throat. He wants us to be upset with the pastor, the pastoral staff. He wants us to be divided because if we're divided, he can conquer us. How do you defeat an army? You divide and conquer. You divide and conquer. You beat them a little bit at a time. And that is what Satan wants us to be. He wants us to be divided. He wants us fighting amongst each other, gossiping about each other, talking about each other, dragging each other down. Because if we do that, we, are, we have no impact on the area around us. We have no impact in the area that we are serving. We have no impact. We have no, our ministry will have no impact if we're just fighting amongst each other. And if we're distracted and we're divided, then Satan has us. And the Bible tells us there, if you're here tonight, like I said earlier, 
If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight, tonight is the night to accept him. Today is the day of salvation because you don't know when will be your last chance to accept him. And that first verse there tells us they come out of their wilderness of sin. If you are in a wilderness of sin tonight, accept Christ and get it taken care of before it's eternally too late. Satan wants us distracted. That way he can defeat us. But what are some marks of a good soldier? We'll give you some marks of a good soldier, and then we'll finish up. First of all, a, a good soldier has to have directions. You have to have marching orders. You have to have, uh, 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 many of you were in the military. You had orders. You had directions, and you had to follow those. Whether you liked it or not, the, your, you know, your commanding officer said, this is what I want, this is how I want it done, and I want you to go do it. You have to have direction to be a good soldier. Not only do you need to hear those directions, you need to heed them. You might be here every week and hear the preaching and the teaching of God's Word. And you hear it week in and week out and week in and week out, but you never react to it. To be a good soldier, you need to react. You need to hear the Word of God, but not only that, you need to heed to the Word of God. You can hear it all you want. You can read it. You can know it. You can quote it. You can memorize it. But if you never act on your directions, if you never act on your orders, if you never act on the Word of God that you hear, you'll never be a good soldier. If you're not willing to listen, if you're not willing to hear the Word and heed to the Word, you'll never be a good soldier. You'll never be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. What does heed mean? To mind to obey, regard with care, take notice of, to attend to, to observe. You must heed the word of God to be a good soldier. Verse 9 tells us, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. He got his direction. He got his orders. Now he could have just heard it and walked along. And think of the casualty and the lives and things that would have been lost if he would have not obeyed his direction. The man of God, give him the word there, what to do and what to do and how to go about it. And he didn't just sit around. If you want to be a good soldier, you've got to hear the word, you've got to heed the word, but you must be diligent also. You must be diligent to follow through exactly with those orders. You've got you to hear it, heed it, then you must be diligent to follow through with it. There's a lost and dying world out here that needs us to hear the word. They need us to heed the word. And they need us to be diligent about it. As you heard in some of the testimonies, some of these young people, they didn't know who Jesus was. And, and, and to us, I grew up in church. I've been in church since I was six weeks old, I think. I, I, I've heard of Jesus all my life and I've heard of Jesus and the great things that he'd done for me and that he died for me and that he come to save me from my sin. But out there, there were literally some children that just said, I don't know what you're talking about. Because we take for granted and when we, we were talking to them, we would say some simple things that we would maybe say to some of our young kids here, oh yeah, I know that. These kids don't know that. There are people out there in this world, in America... This is not way off over in some, uh, you know, a foreign country that does not even speak our language or whatever that. These, these were English-speaking people that lived right here in America that said, I don't know this Jesus you're speaking about. And it's mind-blowing. They need us to be good soldiers. They need us to be good soldiers. And a good soldier also must be dedicated to the cause, ready to do whatever it takes. Verse 11 and 12 tell us, And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and they sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands. All of you all that went on that mission trip, and everybody that prayed for us, everybody that, that, that gave money or did anything to go toward that trip, you got to be in a position on this battlefield really like Aaron and her. 
You were in a position to hold, to help hold up their hands. You may not have been the one right there holding up their hand, but you had a part in holding up the hand that we could encourage the man of God out there that's on that mission field that is trying to reach these lost people. And all of you there that you may thought you may have thought it was silly that we're playing games out in the 110 degree heat. You were holding up their hands. You were holding up their hands. Those of you that preached, you were helping to hold up the hands there and encourage those folks that are out there on the mission field to be a good soldier. We've got to hear the direction. We've got to heed the direction. And we must be diligent to follow through with every single action of it. We can't leave any part of it out. And we must be dedicated dedicated to say, God, whatever it is, I may not be on the front line. Joshua was down there swinging swords and fighting and all this, and he was on the front line right there. But it, you, you, may see, you can say, but God, it doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if I'm on the front line. I don't care where I'm at, God. Just give me something to do. Let me move the chair for the man just to sit down in. I'm willing to just to scoot the chair over for him to sit on. I'll hold his arm up if I have to, God. Whatever it is, I'll bring him a drink of water. I'll sweep the floors. I'll do whatever it is, God, that you want me to do in your army. We have to be dedicated. And not only on the mission field, we need to carry that out right here in Taze Valley Baptist. We need to hold up the arms of Pastor John. We need to pray for him and lift him up. We need to care for him. The pastoral staff, each and every one of these guys, if it hadn't been for the planning and the dedication that they put into this, we couldn't have done this. And I'm telling you what, it was stressful. And it was a stressful week, but it went well. We had a great time and souls were saved. And, and, and these, these, this, this staff here, the way they, the way they worked, and you, if you didn't see them behind the scenes, we had, we had shirts and that they were going out and they were washing clothes of the night and they were staying up half the night, making sure that we were ready to do our job the next day. We had great leaders on this trip, but we need to be there ready to stand in for them, push the chair in for them to help, help them sit down, to hold their arms up and carry them and help them along as they go. We need to be dedicated soldiers here at Taze Valley Baptist Church. There's a lost and dying world out there that needs to hear the gospel. Are you willing tonight to not only hear the word, but to heed to the word? And are you willing to say, God, whatever it is, Put me in the fight. God, if it's just to bear a cup. God, if it's just to move a seat or sweep a floor. God, if it's just to polish shields. Whatever it is you want me to do, God, I will step in and, and, and be a, a, a member in God's army.